Game two of the series. First one was uh, it's ready to use. well over an hour long, hour and 19 minutes. Somebody told me it was not as long as Jeslin vs. Uh, Crazy Man, I think. Game one on this map. I think I'm going to remove this map from the tournament rotation because, good god, it's terrible. <laughs> we have liberated the objective. And by I think I'm going to, I mean I am certainly, definitely going to remove this map. I just cannot stand it. As a player or a caster. <laughs> have a new I've made up my mind. So that's that's my thoughts on that m matter. I'm definitely not putting in some some moss summer because it's too easy to ghost things on that map, and it's also from what we know based on what statistics we do have, extremely allied favored. Like ridiculously so. Anyway, enough about that. Let's focus on the game. Not that the game's going anywhere. I'm sure this one's gonna gonna last forever too. We've got Captain Price playing as Oster in the north, wiring off his cutoff as he always does. He always likes to do this little little barbed wire circle around this point. And uh, DBMB as U.S. forces in the south. No, we're Commander West this game, interestingly enough. And we've also got a sniper opening from Captain Price. So we're going to see Captain Price's sniper make a return to the tournament. And uh. DBMB's sniper did horribly against Antilles. Let's see if Captain S. Price can micro his sniper a little better than his opponent. He does not quite camo. He didn't quite camo before being forced away there and the rifleman moving up to engage him on the retreat path. Do not look like they're going to be able to take him out. There's that health buff in action. We'll be able to get off the field just in time, but because he's forced to retreat and he just took a ton of damage, since his pilots were busy capping over there rather than spotting for riflemen, keeping that sniper in a good position. Already off to a terrible start with that thing. He doesn't he can't afford a medic bunker yet, obviously. He's just gonna have to try and keep that sniper alive somehow. It's gonna be hard. Grenadier's already forced away from this building. Riflemen just walk into that building. Enemy forces are securing our territory. I think DBMB might be at a bit of an advantage here. <laughs> Getting to play as allies after an 80 minute slugfest. Because you can afford to be a little more sloppy <laughs> at the beginning with allies. It's not like the end of the world if you make a little micro mistake. You need to have very precise, very precise movements with your sniper. You can't just be like fucking up with a sniper, sniper first opening. I mean, DBMB just lost a full squad of rear echelon troops. <laughs> but that's not that big of a deal compared to the catastrophe that would ensue if that sniper died. So that, I don't know, that's kind of kind of how I feel about that. Maybe. And we'll see if that if I get proven right or not. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Sniper <laughs> makes it into camouflage. And grenadiers are gonna push away that rifle squad. A lot of manpower bleed for DBMB here. The sniper is remaining relevant despite its low health. Pyo's gonna move to take the left side, and taking out the rear echelons does completely rob. DBMB of any back capping he had. He has no back capping now, only combat squads. That gives Price a huge advantage in that he can send a non combat squad to take territory, and a combat squad has to be dedicated to counter. Weakening him in engagements for the other half of the map. Sniper firing on those riflemen over there, trying to bait the sniper out into the open, away from his grenadier screen. Grenadier's taking up position in this building and standing right here, maybe able to protect that sniper from the M20 once it arrives. I think Captain Price is getting the sense that it's about the five minute mark. He needs to be careful. He just saw that lieutenant. He knows the M20 is on the way, and it just revealed itself to his grenadiers. We'll kite them. This squad falling somewhat low. Jumps back in the house. He was going to try and go for a Faust. Couldn't make it happen. Doesn't know where the sniper is because it's retreated all the way back to the base. And that Grenadier squad is probably going to die on retreat if it doesn't. It's probably going to die on retreat no matter what it does. Grenadier 
Armor skirts have completed on the M20. That rifle squad needs to retreat. That Grenadier squad cannot get in range for the Faust. Pile has been forced away on the left by that rifle squad, which is just idle for a little while. <laughs> you can tell both of them are like, their head is not quite in the game right now. Their micro is not nearly as tight this game as it was for game one. <laughs> But U.S. forces is prevailing here in the beginning of the game. M20 is boxing. Most air player into the base. Grenadiers reinforcing here. Tier 2 structure has completed and Price needs to transition into an AT gun. He's already about a, lost about 100 victory points, which is pretty impressive on Langer Sky. I can't seem to maintain control of that right side VP, and he's lost control of the entire rest of the map as well. Just three riflemen, one lieutenant, M20. That's all you need is U.S. forces in the early game against Oster. Very difficult to contend with. That sniper is really struggling. Flamethrower upgrade on those piles to give them some firepower. Sniper trying to get shots off on something. Pyo is falling low. They'll be forced to retreat again. Sniper's in red cover. Needs to be so careful with that. Grenadier's screening the M20 away. They will get in range for a Panzerfaust. And it has to pull back for repairs while the sniper forces a retreat from the lieutenant. But two more rifle squads moving up to engage. Grenadier's moving up from the left side will not be able to kill that M20. The enemy is taking our territory. And he's chosen close air support to try and crank out the munitions without having really any map control at all. Sniper standing on the victory point to try and get that captured and slow the VP drain. Grenadiers contending with two squads of riflemen in the house will be forced to retreat off that munitions point without getting it captured. The AT gun not really in position to do anything. Finally a medic bunker going up in Price's base. Once he gets up to 50 fuel he'll have the munitions he needs for all his upgrades and his medic bunker and everything like that, putting him in a slightly more comfortable position. But honestly not by much. But he won't be burdened with tech costs anymore for probably pretty much the rest of the game. That's everyone. Grenadiers ready. The bunker is now a field hospital. Since I really rather doubt he's gonna be able to make it past tier two. AT guns in position to screen against a light vehicle that may may reveal itself. Pio squad heading left will fail unless it gets like a million flame crits. It's one. Pretty sure the riflemen win that engagement. AA half track hiding behind the building so the AT gun cannot get into position. Grenadiers repositioning to safety. AT gun setting up. Trying to get that, trying to get a line without exposing himself. It's not really working. His two grenadiers will be forced to retreat. He's got the LMGs, he's got the flamethrower, he's got the sniper. Back to full health. Only 13 kills at 9 minutes. Struggling. Struggling to get a line on any enemy units safely. We'll chase away those riflemen. His cutoff is secure for whatever that's worth. And the victory point is also secure, so he has some time. He has time to work with. Although his fuel and munitions are suffering, his manpower is not, really. Pretty even for kills losses, honestly. AT gun connects with the M20, pulls back to safety. Flamethrower and sniper on the left will force that retreat and he may be able to get a little bit of territory under control. We have a fresh rear echelon troop squad building a fuel cache right there. I think DBMB is going to try and overwhelm this close air support strategy with uh, tanks. Sherman's BAM, which will be hitting the field pretty soon. Major's already completed at 10 minutes and a Sherman is on its way. Despite him having gone with AA half track and M20, his fuel control is so strong. He's going to have that Sherman out in the next minute or so. Captain Price is preparing himself with a second anti tank gun, grabbing the victory point now. Yeah. 
kind of dangerous to dive on a flamethrower like that. <laughs> I guess close air support. He's got munitions. There's going to be teller mines. Even with no map control, he's got munitions. <laughs> Just assume that there's munitions and teller mines. Tank gun misses a shot. Grenadiers are suppressed and cannot get in range for uh, engine damage. It's tank gun moving up. If both AT guns manage to get a shot off, that thing will go down. Can't quite get in range though. They're both moving up simultaneously. Grenadiers providing vision. They will get kited to death though, forced to retreat. Riflemen charging on Grenadiers in green cover take heavy damage on the approach. Grenadiers have to retreat from auto cannon fire, continuing to use the building for protection from those anti tank guns. Incendiary round on those riflemen only gets one kill, and although they're briefly stunned, that sniper will probably have to retreat. AT guns pulling back to safety away from those riflemen. Sniper turns to fire. Riflemen will get suppressed by the MG bunker. I think. There he goes. Sniper will heal up here in the base. A couple Grenadier squads reinforcing. Third Grenadier squad is on the field. DBMB still has not taken control of the right side of victory point. His Sherman will arrive sort of soon. Scott though. Cute up a Scott. Interesting. Might be hoping that he can one-shot the sniper with a lucky hit. But Scott does 100 damage, so it can, with a direct hit, it can kill a sniper. Grenade! Try and bombard the packs from range, but it's very micro-intensive to go Scots against a pack wall because if they get in position for one volley, two shots, the connect can kill a Scott, so it's uh, kind of high risk. In fact, everything that he has on the field will die to one volley from these two AT guns. You're gonna have to be careful. It can be very difficult to micro three light vehicles simultaneously. Left side continues to be harassed by the flamethrower pyo squad. Sniper gets a big hit on those BAR riflemen. They're falling low. Grenadiers are gonna wipe that. What was that? Labor retreat. Barely gets to safety. Sniper does not quite seal the deal. Meanwhile, Grenadiers have to retreat heavy damage from autocannon fire. That AA half-track is not going to round that corner, but it's actually falling quite low, just a small arms fire, I guess, unless an AT gun shot connected, which it looks like it did, actually. I, I don't know, I can't tell, based on the vet alone, what happened over there, but it's got to pull back for some repairs. Rifleman got away very narrowly. Third AT gun in production. Left side flamethrower uh, team will be forced to retreat. Grenadiers in the center with sniper support, doing what they can. Scott moving up. We are losing a sector. We have a full squad. We've been spotted the by the enemy. The pack gun is ready for orders. Anti-tank guns moving up to engage here in the center. If they can get a shot off on a light vehicle, it will be destroyed. Assuming no misses or death crits. Or... Anything like that. M20 hovering on the left with rifle squad lieutenant. Also idle over there. Have a lot of idle units from DBMB. The more time he gives Captain Price to expand and build units and stuff, the harder it's gonna get. No commander selection from DBMB yet either. Armor, rifle, and airborne. Airborne might make sense against close air support, try and out LMG his opponent. Rifle company if he wants to try and flamethrower the pack wall down. Armor company if he wants to just RNG bomb everything. <laughs> I don't know. Flamethrower battle not going well for those riflemen. They have to retreat from that sniper. And one AT gun plus three Grenadiers working the right side, slowly creeping up and getting more territory under control. 
The Scott firing across the hedge. Does not land a shot on that sniper. The AT gun's still pretty far back. And the uh, flamethrower is going to actually retreat away. Oh! Wow. That was a really lucky shot. <laughs> In fact, that's the Scots' only three kills since it hit the field in that wipe. Anti-tank gun trying to move up to push away that AA half-track over there. Rifleman moving to advance to push away that... Anti-tank gun if possible. The sniper making his way back to the front line. Grenadiers in the center. Going to take a lot of bleed from that Scott. He's just going to leave that there. Price will pretty much have to kill that. Utilizing anti-tank gun. Firing through the hedge. If possible. On the right side, the sniper is being deployed to push away that rifleman screen. Grenadiers available to provide vision. Anti-tank gun available to screen away the AA half-track if it moves to re-engage. Incendiary around on that rifle squad. They're falling really low. Very low. Why have they not retreated yet? What is he doing? He's gonna lose that. That sniper's not gonna die. That was pointless to even attempt. He really wants that sniper to die. <laughs> you can't get frustrated with that sniper. You have to chase it down properly and not let greed get the best of you and just lose full squads. Anybody can see that engagement was doomed to failure. Man, that Scott is just doing great work against those Pios, though. Grenadiers making riflemen retreat. Sniper continues to pop away with the incendiary round. Really coming into his zone, by the way. 38 kills. Might need to see some more Tier 4 units from DBMB at some point. Not sure what he's going to do, though. He's got 250 fuel, spending a lot on manpower because he's losing so much infantry to that sniper and grenadiers with LMGs. Second victory point about to fall into Price's control and he's getting better and better control over the game. Scott needs to pull away from the anti-tank gun wall. He doesn't see the AT guns, but he knows that they're in the fog of war. AT guns attacking through the hedge. Ambulance is blocking the Scots' movements. Oh man, both of those shots missed. Got a little lucky right there. It still needs repairs. The M20 hasn't even moved in like 10 straight minutes. <laughs> Airborne being para-dropped. He has chosen Airborne. He's got a lot of munitions in the bank. Trying to make something happen. The P-47 is pretty useless against close air support, if I'm being honest, though. Basically, by choosing this doctrine, the only useful thing he has is paratroopers. <laughs> and maybe Pathfinders, if he can recover some LMG-42s or something. I mean, the para-dropped AT guns are, are nice, I guess, but he is not going to have any need of AT guns against what Price is doing here until Price eventually makes his way to Tier 4 for Panthers, which is what I think he'll probably do if the game lasts like an hour, which it probably will. <laughs> At the very least, DBMB has secured himself a nice victory point lead with the really powerful early game of U.S. Forces against Oster. He's 250... well, 200 points. 200 points ahead of his opponent, which means that the slugfest that the game is clearly turning into is going to be largely in his favor. However, Price being in the north of the, north of the map does mean that it'll be a little easier for him to defend this than for DBMB to defend until this hedge gets destroyed. So, things to keep in mind. AA half-track has been repaired, makes its way up the right side. AT gun needs to move to screen. Infantry moving up here in sufficient numbers to be of a significant threat to the sniper. Those AT guns will be in a bit of danger. AT gun shot does connect and the AA half track will pull back to safety. These forces moving up will be exposed to flamethrower fire but the AT guns about to get decrewed. Sniper is in the base making his way forward to try to assist in this engagement. 
LMG is firing on the lieutenant as well. Incendiary round on that BAR squad in the back. Lieutenant also falls dangerously low. And the paratrooper squad has lost three men to something. <laughs> I don't even know what killed them. How did they die? I don't know, there's three dead paratroopers over here though, apparently. Sniper forces all infantry to retreat. Pyos right there need to retreat. This squad of Pyos moves to recover the AT gun. Scott's trying to take shots at where he thinks the sniper might be, but if those tank guns get in range to fire on that Scott, they'll go down so quick. Just fielded pathfinders provide vision, perhaps, for his Scott. On Langerskaya, it's very important to maintain vision. Almost all engagements happen at pretty long range. Very long range if you're using Jacksons and Scott, so pathfinders can definitely make sense. Price for securing vision in the building. Squads healing and reinforcing by the ambulance. Price pulling back a little bit, trying to spread out to avoid anything catastrophic happening under Scott fire. Look at this blob. Incendiary round from the sniper stuns two squads. Grenadiers have to retreat. Flamethrower will be next. DBMB just rolling over everything. He actually is going to take damage from his own Scott because of these blobbing straight over Price's infantry like this. Sniper falls dangerously low to LMG fire. Rifle grenade brings this paratroopers quite low. Sniper might try to take more shots, but he should probably retreat. If he takes even a even a near miss from a Scott, will probably kill him at this point. Cutoff is being taken by those rear echelon troops. The Scott is not moving to advance. Major's retreat point set up right here on the other side of the hedge so that he can get back to the front line very quickly. Beacon going down right there so the paratroopers can reinforce in the field. M20 harassing some territory on the left. Captain Price is cut off, but he's going to get back control of his cutoff very soon. AT guns moving up to take a shot at that Scott. If it stays out of position for too long, it will get destroyed. Scott moving back just in time. 400 fuel in the bank for DBMB right now. Just trying to outproduce his opponent for infantry, but he doesn't have the huge advantage of a sniper. 46 kills on that sniper, and DBMB has no equivalent except for the Scott, which has 9. By comparison, it's pretty pathetic. AT guns are very exposed. He really wanted to try and figure something out right there. The AT strafe does inflict some casualties, but other than that, it's not that bad. Anti-infantry strafe pins down all the infantry in their advance, and he'll probably be able to preserve that AT gun. If DBMB gets greedy and tries to steal that, he'll probably just lose a bunch of manpower for no reason. Sniper making his way back into the engagements is going to start picking these guys off any second. Captain Price should be able to maintain control of this weapon at the cost of a little manpower bleed. LMG in the building. Flamethrower moving up into short range on those BARs. They're going to be forced to retreat. LMGs are next. Oh, another big Scott hit. I can't believe how effective that Scott has been. <laughs> At uh, at sniping flamethrowers this game. I don't think that sniper's gonna die, no. Sniper is fine. M20 tries to dive. Got frustrated with that sniper again. I wonder how many units will die in failed attempts to kill that sniper this game. <laughs> Who knows? AA half track just exposed itself to Panzerfaust fire. It will connect. Not sure why it did that. It's probably gonna die if an AT gun gets in position. Doesn't really look like some sort of elaborate bait. There's nothing over there to protect it. If he gets out and uses duct tape, he might be able to survive. Recon pass coming in over this, I think. AT guns really want to kill that thing. Recon pass provides vision. There's the volley. Nice use of recon pass. <laughs> nice use of recon pass. 
Sniper firing on Rifleman in the center. Grenadiers need to retreat. Sniper a little exposed. Grenadiers screening. Sniper jukes right. There's the snipe. Rifleman have to retreat. Scott does not move up to take another shot. Lots of manpower bleed. 500 fuel on the bank. 500 fuel. All this map control and nothing to do with it. It's kind of funny that he built a fuel cache. <laughs> He built a fuel cache to convert his manpower into fuel. He now has no manpower and 500 fuel. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if he regrets regrets that decision. <laughs> Might be a wipe. No. Wheel around the corner again. Price has a lot of munitions stored up now. We'll be able to utilize anti-tank strafe on this collected stuff if he wants. Price has not even killed that beacon. <laughs> oh, there he notices it now. Grenadiers in the center need to pull away. Price needs to do a little more harassment over there on the left side. He's also got an idle squad on the right. Defending the fuel in green cover, though. And that might be intentional. <laughs> wow. Almost another wipe by that squad of a flamethrower squad. Fourth AT gun in production. Maybe a little overzealous on the AT guns by price. Three was probably enough, honestly. His opponent's clearly making only infantry and one Scott. Whoa! Sniper almost went down right there. That was close. He needs to heal that up. He's gonna retreat now. Grenadiers continue to try and screen. He will retreat. And I, I find it a little weird that he would get a fourth AT gun instead of a mortar. Bombard list instead of maybe Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers can be a nice transition against US forces, BAR squads. They can't close in quite as well, and once Panzer Grenadiers hit Vet 3, they can probably contend with Vet 3 BAR squads quite cost effectively over the course of a really long game. Especially with a sniper supporting. I don't know though. LMG paratroopers may or may not win this. They're vet two, unvetted Grens. Grens were already wounded before the engagement. Grenade toss will seal the deal. Rice dodges, but the fact that he got flushed out of cover will cause him to take too much damage. Loses the engagement regardless. Couple squads moving up to take control of the center VP again. Right side falling to the paratroopers and pathfinders. If he harasses this victory point at all, that'll certainly help a lot. Looks like Price is gonna make an aggressive maneuver. Oh no! That's all it takes. Two shots. Scott is dead. A gun carrier just got Sniper down. working on the Pathfinders, I think. Shooting at something. Yep. Pathfinders go down. Two of them sniped. AT guns pulling back to safety. Grenadiers need to pull back to safety as well. Some very near near misses right there. Rifle grenade doesn't connect that well. This rifle squad will probably be forced away. The sniper's moving to try and support. AT guns pulling back to safety. And those grenadiers should be able to get away just fine. All squads get away clean. Squad healing up here in the base as well. Price losing map control briefly, but he has destroyed the Scott and continues to inflict a lot of manpower bleed on his opponent. He still has not lost the Sniper. Sniper is up to 60 kills and will be able to get back into the base safely. But again, Captain Price's overinvestment into anti-tank guns is hurting him a little bit right here. DBMB's not going to make any vehicles. <laughs> He's just stopped making vehicles. He's not even going to bother. But he can't keep up victory point pressure because it's just too, too far away. <laughs> Captain Price can defend that way too effectively. What can he do? Major retreat points set up right here. He's got to do some more manpower reinforcement, more manpower bleed. Has none in the bank at all. He might consider putting the major retreat point on the road because that would lock the victory point into his control unless Captain Price made very aggressive maneuvers. But it would also mean that his major retreat point was in a road. <laughs> so something to consider. Incendiary artillery, or incendiary round, stuns two squads. 
Anti-infantry strafe forces the retreat. Sniper's gonna move up into the point to try and get the point captured. That's kind of dangerous. Anti-tank strafe on the ambulance, I think. Looks like it was pretty off target, though. Doesn't really hit anything. But it does buy a sniper time to capture the point unharassed. And it also forces the ambulance to move, so he's not reinforcing while the ambulance is in motion. Buys a lot of time, in fact, as a result of that. Grenade tossed and dodged. Nice dodge. All map control on the right side, back in Captain Price's control. Anti-tank guns sitting here outside of his base. Available if necessary, but until then, not really needed to do anything. If he wanted to play really risky, he could use one of them to harass territory. <laughs> That would be rather dangerous, though. He doesn't want to give an anti-tank gun to his opponent. And Battle Phase 2 is in production, so he is finally going to start teching up. 31 minutes into the game. Pretty reasonable timing. Maybe could have done a little earlier. I, again, think four anti-tank guns was overzealous. But we know for Captain Price, his motto is slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> Anti-infantry strafe is ready. Sherman is on the field. That's a... Interesting choice. I, I thought he had a lot of success with that one Scott. He, he made a bit of a slip up. I guess he wants something that won't die in one volley. But it actually will die in one volley. <laughs> one volley from this, so... I don't know if I think that Sherman's gonna work very well. Oh, it's getting a little exposed. There was half a volley. Panzerfaust shot just hit the ground. Probably would have been a dead Sherman if that connected. Sniper picking off infantry. There's only one rifle squad left. One paratrooper squad, one pathfinder squad. That sniper has 66 kills. Rear echelon troops retreating. DBMB clearly struggling. He's, he doesn't seem to know really what to do. He's lost so much stuff. Captain Price has e definitely equalized the manpower game. More than equalized it. He's now way in the lead. If your sniper has 68 kills, I would say you got a pretty good return on investment. <laughs> How much did he spend on that? 360, right? 360 for that sniper and 68 kills. I don't even have any idea how much manpower damage it's done. Probably at least 2,000. Probably, probably a bit more than that. Fuel cache goes down to an AT gun volley. Recon pass. And Price will see that his opponent has almost nothing left. He will also see this flank coming with that recon pass. Once he gets tier 4, built, gets a panther on the field, he'll probably be in a really strong position, unless DBMB maybe spends some of his fuel, but if he does that, he'll be hurting for manpower even more. DBMB basically has to execute flawlessly for quite some time, he needs Price to start making some pretty dumb mistakes. And even if that happens, I don't know if, if this will be a recoverable game. He's using his Sherman like it's a Scott. <laughs> he probably should have just bought a Scott. <laughs> then again, his Scott would be dead right now. His Sherman is not, so... Maybe I should eat my words. You've got a captain hitting the field. Warning orders, gang. Listen up. Oh, man.
DBMB had about 130 victory points left at the end of last game. Captain Price currently has 170, so... If he does not lose victory point control for the entire rest of the game, Captain Price will have faction pick for game three. He needs to hold on, though. Not let any territory get harassed. If DBMB wants to secure faction selection for next game, he might consider para-dropping Airborne in the back and trying to harass VPs with a simultaneous push for this center. Captain tier on the captain on the field. Not really sure what he's gonna do with that. I certainly don't think he wants a Stuart. He can para drop AT guns, so I guess he wants to make a pack howitzer. <laughs> but I don't really think a pack howitzer is going to help. UVMB is so stuck. <laughs> Cannot find a way to make a maneuver here. Doesn't know what to do. Now there is a fine piece of kill. Boys are done here. Barely anything on this map is even moving. <laughs> 70 kills on the sniper. Captain Price just waiting patiently for tier 4? No, for tier 3. He's getting an Ostwind. Interesting. Right, you dopes, listen up. That Sherman is gonna die if it advances any farther than that point. Paratroopers are also going to die. Oswind on their retreat path now. If the Oswind moves up with the four anti-tank guns supporting, pretty decent chance that this could be a decisive engagement. Attacking ground through the hedge at the major retreat point directly. I want those squads move. Move. AT guns did not move to support the Oswind's push. So the Sherman is not exposed. Yet, Sniper is exposed. Sherman might take a shot. No. Sniper will be okay for now. Pack Howitzer is indeed on the field. I don't, uh... I really don't think that's going to do anything. <laughs> AT strafe on the ambulance. There it goes. And it clears the pack howitzer as well. Does a little bit of damage to it. The ambulance destroyed. Captain Price could make a decisive engagement, but I I guess that's not really his style. <laughs> He'll probably just wait patiently to win for the next 40 minutes. Looks like we're going in. DBMB clearly has no plan to win this. I feel like he's just smashing his head against the wall right now. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Wow. Sherman peeking a little bit. P-47 strafe getting called in. That could, I don't know, push the Osmond off the map for a little while, unless the Osmond shoots them down, which it might actually. Maybe he's just hoping that a plane will land on all the AT guns. <laughs> If a plane lands on all the packs, maybe you'll have a little room to maneuver. That could certainly help. 
Grenadiers engaging over here against some infantry which are not looking like they're going to be able to cross the road. Grenadiers will be forced to retreat. Sniper continues to bleed them. Pick up kills. Huge amounts of manpower being dropped onto that pack howitzer by the way. Not just the huge purchase price but also uh, the reinforcement cost is outrageous. Sixty manpower to reinforce the pack out a crew member for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with that. Sherman moves up to try to assist, taking these engagements. Second plane gets shot down somewhere. Okay, over there. Didn't hit anything. Vehicle crew trying to take the point will not be successful. Anti-tank on wall moving up to put pressure on that Sherman. Trying to push that away from the point. Austin needs some repairs. Captain Price up to 100 fuel now. I'm not sure what he's going to get next as far as armor. I'm really surprised it doesn't field a mortar. There goes another ambulance. And the pack houses decrewed again. Almost destroyed, in addition. Austin moving up to support in the center. May start firing at the Major's retreat point. No, just taking shots at the Sherman. Has high explosive rounds equipped. Point is in. Captain Price is control once again. Continues to play very cautious, very patient. DBMB doesn't really have much stuff remaining. Points are down to 300. What the hell am I meant to do with these recruits? Green as green can be. Grab your shit and follow me. I feel like the best thing DBMB can do right now is suicide all of his infantry. <laughs> Hope that Captain Price does not move across the road, because he might not. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> make like nine tanks in his base with the victory points he has remaining. And then make a glorious final charge and hope for the best. That is honestly the only way I could see this game ever turning around. Because this slow death, where he just hesitantly tries to take control of the victory point with this pathetic pack howitzer support, <laughs> and the tiny infantry force he has left, is just depressing. Recon pass coming over the center. Price has a lot of munitions in the bank from redistribute resources. Anti-infantry strafe on the vehicle crew. Oh, they still have enough to, re to uh, still have enough to um, get inside, but I don't know if they'll get unpinned in time. Stupid dive bomb coming down on the Sherman. Get inside. What's he waiting for? Oh, that wasn't targeted where I thought it was. Targeted it over here. I don't think it killed anything though, right? Major's still alive. I don't see any dead bodies. It blew up the pack howitzer. Other than that, it's fine. Sherman is also fine. The stupid dive bomb actually cuts off the uh, <laughs> cuts off the territory too. Not that economic harassment matters at all. He has 820 munitions and 750 fuel. Sherman cannot expose itself for more than a split second because he knows there's four AT guns hidden somewhere on this battlefield. These infantry squads are all going to retreat, everything retreating. For some reason. Captain Price has a thousand manpower. He might consider some caches or something at this point. His manpower gains at this point are so ridiculously overwhelming he can't even spend it anymore. Could go tier four. He's still only got one Ostwind. He's spending most of his fuel on munitions. I don't know why he doesn't get more aggressive. <laughs> why can't he just be aggressive? There's a time for defense and a time for offense. This is just silly. He knows exactly what his opponent has. I hate this map.
There's a squad wipe. That put a tiny little dent in Captain Price's manpower, I guess. Looks like he is going to get aggressive. He's actually going to try and finish the game. Here we go. Sherman has a damaged engine. Lots of damage from anti-tank gunfire. That thing's dead. Ostwind working on some infantry over here on this side of the road. P-47 rocket strafe just got called in on that Ostwind. It's going to be fine. He again needs a miracle plane crash. That squad just got wiped by a straight P-47 rocket though. Flamethrower forced retreat over here. Big push by the infantry. Sniper continues to kite. Up to 77 kills. Will bleed their advance. Grenadier's position in green cover for this push as well. Ostwind has safely made it back to the base. Should be fine. Depending on how that plane gets shot down. Who knows what might happen. Squad will retreat. Spread out. Cover your sector. Tank support is here. Sherman ready. Plane crashes harmlessly over the left side. Another Sherman is now on the field. These two squads briefly get some territory under control on the right side. Captain Price replaces his lost grenadiers quickly. Repairs his Ostwind. Still no tier four. Still no other tier three units. Still. Pretty much pop capped. Sniper takes a shot at the Pathfinders. Sherman is gonna try and make something happen against that sniper. The AT gun wall is a little far back right now. Pretty much everything DBMB has left, making a desperate push towards the center. Ostwind is fully repaired. He's got enough munitions for three more P-47s, I think. It's a lot of P-47s. Price has not harassed any territory that is completely, completely undefended on the left. Zero anything over there. P-47 called in on the Ostwind again, and it will pull back to safety. I feel like DVMV is literally just spamming planes and hoping for plane crashes. I think that may legitimately be his strategy this game, because he just called in a major recon pass. In addition to the P-47 rocket strafe. That's major artillery, I think. Yeah. Couple squads reinforcing in DBMB's base. These two grenadiers making their way over here to the right side to engage the uh, paratroopers. Send the area around will prompt them to retreat. The Sherman finds an opening and he wants to go in, but he knows there's AT guns waiting on the other side of his house. It's a pointless even attempt. Pulls back to safety. Panzerfaust connects with the Sherman. It will probably be destroyed by AT gun fire if it does not get safety. He's gonna do victory point harassment though. Remember, Price cannot lose that many victory points if he wants to have faction selection for game three, which on this map you probably do want to have faction selection. There goes the Sherman. The crew gets out just in time, but the tank is, is gone. The Oswin's still alive and another Sherman getting queued up. Really, manpower is the only thing he cares about. He has 700 fuel. It's not a big deal. Price finally, 50 minutes into the game, thinks I should harass territory. Now that I have a thousand manpower advantage, I guess I'll go take some territory away over there on the right side. I don't know why he's taking this, as if it makes any difference. <laughs> Just run for the victory point. Just go take the victory point, please. I guess he needs fuel and munitions. His opponent certainly doesn't care. Incendiary round from the sniper. That sniper is still alive. 85 kills on that thing. It will not die. <laughs> it just will not die. Langerskaya is sniper heaven. Tank support is here. Sherman ready. Send your orders. Sherman.
Sherman on the field. Sniper actually came dangerously close to going down right there, but still alive. DBMB continues to take horrendous manpower bleed. Sherman making his way up the left side, trying to make something happen. There are three AT guns right there, though. Are we tier 4 yet? Yes, tier 4 finally in production. I think Price is going to go with a Panther next. Panther should easily be able to hunt and kill Shermans and start getting a little more aggressive. Almost an hour into the game. What the hell am I meant to do with these recruits? Green is green can be. Well, grab your shit and follow me. I like your ass. I mean, I don't want to see myself again. Squad is back to full strength. I feel like Langros Gaia could be so much more interesting just by replacing like maybe the fuel and victory point placements, just reverse them maybe or something. I don't know, just make the victory points equidistant. This placement is so stupid. The base bunker is partially protecting the victory point, like how dumb is that? <laughs> how does that make sense? Shouldn't that be like a monstrous red flag for map design? Shouldn't it? There goes a the full rear echelon troop squad. Major artillery dropped on Grenadiers, doesn't look like it's going to hit anything. AT guns shooting through the hedge, trying to nail that Sherman. No shots really connecting, they need to get a little closer. Grenadiers are fine. DBMB continues to have basically no forces with which to contend against Captain Price, whose lead is only getting bigger and bigger as the game goes on. Austin will easily push away those paratroopers. The sniper shooting at them in their retreat path may bleed them a little bit. Looks like they're going to be basically okay, though. Since the Austin just seems to not be able to hit retreating infantry at all. Major takes a sniper shot, will be forced to retreat as well. Sherman has accomplished basically nothing. Pretty big anti-tank uh, anti strafe right there. Hits a lot of DBMB's forces, inflicting more manpower bleed. He loses another full squad. And Price is going to build his tier 4 structure someday, I think. Still hasn't done it, though. 53 minutes. Point is under attack. Why did I leave this map in rotation? What was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking, you guys? It's the peer pressure. All the other tournaments have this map. This is a, like the tournament map. I certainly don't know why. <laughs> but it is. Somebody's going to have to explain that to me, how this map makes any sense. Because <laughs> clearly, I'm missing something here. <laughs> If this is really engaging tournament play, I, I honestly truly think all the games we've seen on Minsk Pocket have been so much better. <laughs> so much better than this. You guys are with me on this, right? Come on. Let's, my personal bias aside, let's just be honest. That's the second time in this game I've seen that happen. Panzerfaust keeps hitting the ground. Warning orders, men. Weird. Sniper 
Blast those riflemen with the incendiary round. Grenadiers have to retreat. These infantry are making a feeble push up the center. They're not going to accomplish anything. One Sherman and vehicle crew working on the left side, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Going to try and poke at an infantry squad or something. If he takes a Panzer fast, it'll probably die. LMG paratroopers falling pretty low to the sniper. Sherman almost goes down, but no Panzerfaust. Tier 4 structure's up. Price, I think, needs to take some losses. <laughs> He's not up to the fuel for the Panther yet, though. Building himself a fuel cache over here on the right side. Try and boost his economy a little bit. God, the miracle, the miracle hit. <laughs> oh man, how many kills did that sniper have? I wish I got a last look at it before that happened. <laughs> that back out, sir, has one kill. <laughs> one kill. And he takes out the sniper. At least he got the moral victory. If I were DBMB, I would just surrender right there and be, be happy that the sniper is dead. <laughs> and then just enter game three with fresh, fresh mind, clean slate. That's just me personally, though. <laughs> me personally, I would have surrendered ages ago. P47 is going to push that P47 into a retreat. Oh, the plane crash! The plane crash kills a pack! Oh my god! Could this be happening? Is the comeback real? No, the Ostrom is still alive. And a broom bear just hit the field. Why a broom bear? I mean, okay, I guess. One AT gun left. That one got decrewed. But the victory point's not being taken. Again, he needs to bring that under 132, I think. Some number in the 30s. Repairs going up on the Vet 3 now, Ostwind. The and the Broom Bear is going to go push away the paratroopers on the right side. This blob of grenadiers should win the engagement for the center if the AT gun moves up to push away the Sherman. There go the paras. More infantry making their way to the center. Packhauser suppresses one of those grenadier squads. And the tank gun did not move up to support, so he can't push that thing away from his grenadiers. Taking a lot of manpower bleed here. Broom Bear moving to push infantry out of the center point. Slowly but surely. Pretty good hit right there. Captain's screening it away. And the point will be captured for the first time in like 30 minutes, I think. The clock is ticking against Price again. The battle for faction selection has begun in earnest. <laughs> Captain Price needs to get more AT guns built. Sherman taking shots at the uh, Grenadiers right there. Price having decided to go Broom Bear doesn't have the Panther with which to hunt down that Sherman, sadly. Having a Broom Bear is nice for protection of the center point. The clock is stopped against him again. Broom Bear gets a big hit on that repairing squad. It has to retreat. Packhauser clears another AT gun, though. Let's keep those AT guns crewed. Since he's spending all of his fuel, Captain Price doesn't have the what he needs for his his doctrinal airplane abilities. 75 points remaining only. Captain in red cover against these LMG Grenadiers. Backhauser hits the Ostwind. I feel like Captain Price might. Thinking about an anti-tank strafe, trying to take something out. If he strafes the Sherman while it's repairing, it might go down. Continues to just camp. He did do some light harassment of this side, but the Sherman shut it down. Without a way to aggressively hunt down Shermans, even a Panzer IV would be useful. 
His opponent doesn't exactly have that much anti-tank. Except for his P-47 reserves, which have pretty much been exhausted. He can do it pretty much one more time, I think, this game. Maybe. Recon pass and anti-tank strafe on the pack howitzer. And some retreating paratroopers. That could be a wipe. Not quite. Oh, that didn't do anything. That barely even touched that pack howitzer. That was weird. Broom bear bleeding infantry that exposed themselves. Osman's been fully repaired. AT gun's also been recruited. Certainly looks like this is going to go to game three. Broom bear wipes that squad. DBMB has almost nothing remaining at all. Panzer Faust on an overly aggressive Sherman. P-47 coming in. One gets shot down, lands in Price's base. The other one probably gonna get shot down as well. Victory point still in Captain Price's possession. firing at the broom bear doesn't look like there's gonna be any RNG tastic plane crash on that trajectory it doesn't get shot down I should be able to maintain control two AT guns should be enough to protect him against these Shermans that one's gonna go down any second I think there it goes. Grenadiers maintain control. Still clocked at 100. Still stopped at 171. Have both Shermans been destroyed? No. That Sherman's receiving some repairs. Almost no infantry left. Cannot believe Price is not doing a little more harassment. Hour and two minutes into the game, Panther is on its on its way. I don't understand why Price is not more aggressive sometimes, like, come on, look at look at what's left, nothing, there's nothing left, he could probably like box select his whole army and A move the left side of victory point and then go AFK and win, like he would probably win, I'm actually serious when I say that, I think he would win if he did that, <laughs> but he just sits here, it's infuriating to have to watch. Price's patience is absolutely unparalleled, I swear. I I don't understand how he can actually camp two victory points for an entire game in a best of three. Can you imagine a best of five between Captain Price and anyone on Langra? <laughs> it would take all day. It's impossible. I don't I don't get it. Panther on the field, screening away that Sherman. Jackson on the field, screening away the Panther. He's AT gun support. Broom Bear continues to protect the center point, only 14 points remaining for the Allies. <laughs> Did two Panzerfaust just bounce? Wow. Lucky break for that Sherman, although I'm not sure it's going to survive. Howitzer's doing pretty okay, considering. Survived an anti-tank strafe. 12 kills. Jackson just died. 
Anti tank gun, fire. Panther's receiving repairs. Broom Bear needs some repairs. Osman and Broom Bear combo will be more than enough to protect this victory point. And is it over? Victory points didn't run out, but it's over! I think the ABMB surrendered. Frankly, the victory points haven't moved for 45 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Alright, well, it's 1 1. Short break. Game 3.